greetings, Dragon Sworn, and anybody else who has happened upon this channel. Welcome. Again, we're going to talk about some more Wheel of Time stuff, because obviously my favorite subject. But uh, last, I guess it was last night, we uh, had a fun little live stream with the, you know, the Questioners YouTube and the uh, Dane from the White Cloaks YouTube channel. Go check them out if you uh, got a free second. Um, but we were talking about, I brought this article up, well, at least what I thought was this article. It was actually an older version, so this article sort of, well, didn't sort of, it rubbed me the wrong way in a lot of ways. But first thing I want to do is, even though we have this hideous shot of, of Loyal on here, or what they claim is Loyal, anyways, what I want to do first, before I go into this article and why it's complete horseshit, excuse my language, is what is important to Loyal and what they did to him in the show, besides for his appearance. Because his appearance I, is just hideous. I don't know that anybody <laughs> likes what they did with Loyal. But there is a bunch of stuff that took they took away from Loyal that is going to destroy his character for the rest of the seasons to come in the Wheel of Time show. What are a few of those things, and what do they do on the show? So, what's important to Loyal? Well, did he once men mention Elder Hammond and how he was young to be out of the steading? Did he even mention the steading? I don't know that he mentioned the steading. So, Elder Hammond, no steading. Know how he's young for an Ogier, even though he's... Well, I guess maybe they did say that, to be fair. I think they did. I haven't gone back, so maybe they did. So maybe they did mention how young he is, but not that he was sort of on the run. I don't remember. I don't think. Obviously, books are books and knowledge are very important to Loyal, so they did hit that in the show. We'll give him that one, right? He had a bunch of books, right? So, but I'm not sure, and you'd have to correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't feel like they did. Um, I, I, I'm almost positive they didn't. <laughs> About... Loyal's interest in Rand and writing a book about Rand and Taviran and the three boys and how it's miraculous that three Taviran, I guess in the show's case five, so, you know, whatever, uh, are in the same spot at the same time. And that is pretty much what attaches Loyal to the boys is the fact that they're Taviran and he sort of is getting dragged along, but he's also interested and wants to write a book on them. Pretty sure that's not in the show. Comments for or for correcting me when I'm wrong, because I can be wrong. So if I'm wrong, please let me know. If it was mentioned uh, in the five seconds of screen time Loyal was gotten, it given, it wasn't uh, mentioned very heavily. Uh, also, I think the biggest F you to Loyal in this the show was Loyal's importance to Waygates. The Waygates are pretty much Loyal's thing. And I don't think anybody would disagree with me. This read the books. Loyal, almost his whole arc, I don't want to say his whole arc, but a big part of his arc is eventually, and spoilers, helping out Rand with the Waygates. He is initially the one that shows them how to open it with the Leaf of Avicendora, which is not present in the show. He is pretty much actually for a time the only one who knows how to get around in the ways and he is instrumental in helping shutting them down later in the series so what they did in the show completely takes that whole arc away from him so i don't know what they're going to do with loyal in fact they don't even they don't even know what they're going to do with loyal it seems right uh, but as we can see, that they, they, they want to fake out his death to make us all pissed off because we love Loyal. And the final thing, which is probably the biggest, because it's what makes... Uh, I don't know, there's so many big ones. I can't say the biggest. There's a lot of biggest. But one that's also extremely big is the fact that Loyal is a tree singer. Now, he is pretty much... I, I think he's probably the only tree singer mentioned. It may be one of the only tree singing Ogier alive. If there's many more, it's maybe a handful, right? And 
it sucks that they took this part away from him because not only does that get, you know, because they destroyed the whole Eye of the World scene, you didn't have the Green Man, you didn't have the Pool of Sedan. We could go over the many, 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 many ways that they screwed up the whole Eye of the World scene. Hell, he wasn't even there, obviously. Nobody was there. But the things that they could have done with Loyal and his tree singing and the things that he does that make you just uh, love him, just and it shows what type of person he is and, and his, his ability to, to sing to a tree and make it with, withstand and, 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 uh, and beat back even the blight from taking it over. That's just the ability that, that tree singing gives to, to nature. I don't understand why they won't try and incorporate that. Maybe they will later. They'll ruin it somehow. <laughs> they ruin everything they touch. I want to put a real quick edit in here. I forgot also about something massively important to Loyal, which is all the groves and how all the groves have pretty much been annihilated. And actually being in Tarvalon, or Tarvalon, or however you want to say it, that the grove was actually still there was a huge deal to Loyal. So that's another thing that they, I guess, forgot that, you know, Loyal is basically nature orientated and was looking for grows. And, but I just, it drives me crazy. The fact that they just didn't think of any of these things and that Loyal, before he's even given any meaningful screen time in this show, they just destroyed him. With everything they did. And then on top of that now, he's being used as a fake death. And we've talked to, 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 to you know, for, for BS that they're trying to sell us, saying that this is why we did it, right? Well, as we went over in that stream, they did they did a whole bunch of fake deaths. You have the naive fake death, you got the, the Tom fake death, whether, to, well, well it, it, you know, the person... Formerly known as Tom, I guess, you know, if you want to call him Tom, he really isn't isn't Tom, but I digress. Uh, you know, it's possible that <laughs> Tom doesn't come back. The way they made him in the show, he's not important at all. So Tom could be dead. But you got Nynaeve's fake death, you got Tom's fake death, now you got uh, apparently Aguimar's not dead, Lord Aguimar, uh, from what I've heard, I mean, it's possible they, I swear I read something that Lord Agomar is, is going to make an appearance in season two. Maybe it's a flashback, but maybe he's not dead. And then on top of that, you have Loyal, which they've said straight up, Loyal is not dead. And I said it in the stream again, if you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll repeat it here. In that one simple scene, they ruin three or four things maybe even f maybe more than that five six a whole bunch so not only have they fake killed loyal they've they've neutered the dagger's power because fane stabbed him with the da the ruby hilt of dagger so any as any wheel of time reader knows anybody stabbed with that ruby hilt of dagger hilt of dagger has no chance at all they're they're gone it's over so that has been, uh, nope, so so we know nothing's, that dagger is just pretty much a dagger at this point because, you know, it doesn't have anything special about it, which sucks because that could have been something cool to, to play off of. Two, they've completely, uh, well, I, Perrin is, is destroyed again, I guess. Uh, the, the layers of destruction for Perrin in, the, in this show have been ridiculous, but uh, the fact that Perrin just pusses out and doesn't do anything to, to help save his companion. He just sits in the corner with an axe and, and cries like a baby. Uh, you know, there you go. So that's two. I know there's more. The Horn of Valier, uh, I don't even want to go over it. How, how stupid the whole Horn of Valier stuff is in that scene. And just, uh, you know, the whole scene in general just... It, it's amazing how much you can wreck in just a five minute scene or less. Uh, you've destroyed two characters. Fane is a, now a, a, a mustache-twirling villain. And uh, it's a shame. But they go on in this article to say, basically... That... He was seemingly murdered by Fane. 
And however, it's known that Loyal has not been removed from the series. Right. So what I want to find, it says that Rafe Judkins has addressed the incident. And Judkins confirmed the character is alive. Right? So we get down down to the explanation here. Wheel of Time faking Loyal's death, death in the fu- finale and then coming, confirming his survival Excuse me, immediately afterward was an odd creative choice, but not one that was done without reason. Junkin's comments on that. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think he knows why they do anything. Uh, he wanted to use Loyal fake out to get fans ready for real character deaths. He explained... That while he didn't truly kill Loyal, some book characters will eventually have to die. Even if they didn't, they even if they live in the source material. His thinking was that if viewers thought Loyal was dead, they would be emotionally prepared for that inevitable scenario. So what you're saying is, when you start killing off main characters for some reason if that's what you're going to do will be just as angry or more angry apparently <laughs> because I, I i didn't feel anything but mad uh it wasn't like oh i'm sad and now i'm happy he's alive i actually sort of wish they kept him dead so they couldn't ruin him more uh, i sort of wish that for almost all of the characters in the show um but because I don't feel like they're ever going to turn around the story in this show. So I almost feel like death is a, is a better way out for them. But this is, and then this whole, we're, we're back to talking about the myth of we have to get rid of characters because there's not enough room for all of them. And also, this is now pretty much, you know, as as the the white cloaks call them, Raginor confirming that he thinks he knows better than Robert Jordan and that he wants to be George R.R. R. Martin and kill off main characters. You can fit them all in if you wanted to because you're adding characters that don't exist in the story or are mentioned by mentioned maybe in passing. You're giving Suan Sanche backstory. You're giving uh, Moraine a bunch of airtime in... Season 2, you got Min's aunts showing up. You got Nynaeve's mother showing up. You're giving more screen time to Alana and her warders who nobody cares about. And Alana shouldn't even be show. Sh- 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 Alana, Alana is a freaking D-tier character in the book. Yet, she gets all this screen time and she gets all these stories written for her. Step in some... <laughs> It's a whole freaking episode. We all know that shit. It's all bullshit. So all this is, all this line is, is, you know, we're going to have to kill off book characters eventually. Is just bullshit so he can get his own crap in there, which has nothing to do with the story. And I wish they would just say, well, they're never going to say it. It would be nice if they just say, we don't care, we're going to do what we want. They're never going to say it because they, they want to try and keep uh, keep some of these book readers interested. Most of the book readers that are, I guess, I don't want to say Jordan purists, but us that actually value the books and wanted to see a faithful adaptation of the books will basically pretty much be watching this to call it out and call it what it is, which is... A bunch of crap. You know, that's a fight we're just going to have to keep fighting. But Rafe Judkins wants this to be Game of Thrones. He wants to, he doesn't know how to, to cause drama other than killing people we like. And all he's going to do is just, you know, basically probably kill characters we like because we keep saying his vision for this series is garbage. And when all, all, you know what, he could, he, that's the silliest thing of this whole thing. If he just faithfully adapted most of it and threw in a few of his own things, we'd probably be fine with it. I mean, I might call it out here and there, but if everything was pretty faithful, 
you know, you want to add some of your stuff, the low gain stuff with the Gildan, Gilde- yeah, Gildan, ugh, I, you know, me and my enunciation. Uh, you know, you want to add stuff like that in, fine. You know, uh, yeah, I, I think that Elias is a great character to throw some backstory in for, right? You could, I mean, man, there's, there's, there, you could get a whole freaking chunk of, of of your own stuff in with a loyal backstory. Or not a loyal backstory, well, loyal too, but with a Elias backstory, excuse me. Uh, and they go on to, in this article at least, to list a few characters that are not not the biggest to the story, but are reoccurring allies, which I found funny because Julian, you, you know, isn't freaking cast yet. Galad isn't cast yet. Gawain, at least as far as we know, Gawain isn't cast yet. Perrin isn't cast yet. These are all pretty important characters that aren't cast yet, but, you know, thank God we got Nynaeve's uh, mom and, and, and Min's aunt and uh, Yasuka Kalek or whatever the hell her freaking name is, who is, a, a, you know, thank goodness we have that character cast, right? So, do you, I'm pretty sure you all understand what I'm saying. It's all bullshit because they just want to add the characters they want. So... Then also, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, we can't have a show, you can't hold 2,000 series regulars through multiple seasons. Well, you don't have to. If you got these people under contract, and then most of them are in and out, some don't even show up for freaking whole seasons. Now, of course, I understand this is TV and that's not how it works, but there's a way to do it if you wanted to do it. it re- there really is. I mean, you just don't want to try. You just want to do what you want to do, and you're uh, you're making excuses for why you can't do it faithfully. And the reason you really can't do it faithfully is because you're not talented. That's the problem. You're not talented, and you're arrogant, and you think you're better than the original writers of this story. And a lot of us are going to keep calling it out. I'm going to keep calling it out. And, uh, you know... I know we got, there was some discussion, hoping that maybe it wouldn't get a season three. I think we're probably. I was talking to Al Dan, a, a, a frequent viewer of the channel, in, in some in some comments. Uh, I think we're probably going to get three and four. I don't know, but I am going to be there for every season, calling out this bullshit until I am hoarse and I can't speak anymore because. I'm, I, you know, me and I'm sure many others are not going to let this, you know, poser uh, get away with butchering this fantastic series. And that's, you know, I, I wanted to say it a little better than I did in the live stream because I had the wrong article because, you know, I'm a, I'm a great YouTuber, but I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, you know, it, it, we're, we're approach, quickly approaching 900. Uh, and hopefully on our way to a thousand. If you like this content, want to see more Wheel of Time stuff, please let me know in the comments. Please share it. It helps to share this video. It helps a ton. Uh, you guys have been awesome with all that. Uh, the support has been awesome. And uh, we're going to have some more live streams, hopefully. Hopefully I can get some more uh, unique Wheel of Time guests. And we can talk Wheel of Time, man. It's always fun to talk Wheel of Time. Book stuff. How bad the TV show is. Expectations of where it's going. You know, hell, maybe we'll we'll uh, talk about some old theories back in the day and see see what people have to say about that. I don't know. The the sky's the limit. We can do all kinds of stuff. So uh, let me know what you want to see, and, and I'll, I'll try and provide. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, until next time, all hail the Lord Dragon, and have a great night or day, wherever you are.